All right, I'm going to go right for this beginning and bring it right to the top. And what it boils down to is the earth is made of creatures, and that's a literal fact. Olivine is a byproduct and the result of, of um, tendinous material in creatures turning into stone. It's a, it literally is stone in the body, but when it mixes with some of the other materials in the body, magnesium and all these different materials, they, um, it, it turns into olivines. Now, they show olivine here as this very bright green crystal, and it's not like that in nature very often. That is the circumstance of something being, this particular olivine being in a geothermal area where it boils out all, every other bit of organic material. But I'm going to show you olivine that is the real olivines um, that we have in the earth. And the earth is made, look at this, um, it is a, it is a common mineral in the earth substance that weathers quickly on the surface. Now, the ratio of magnesium it talks about all these different um, amounts of chemicals that are in these substances and how they believe it was formed. Now, I'm going to show you the reality of it, though. All right, here's one of those giant heads. You see this? That is the product of a hand. That's a, the hand molded this, and I did this with a, a, a this type of stuff here. And I molded my own one, and, and it came out. I can make it exactly identical to this if I took it out of the bag. And I did. I made it identical. I have a video about it. Anyway, that's the hand molding it from a giant. It's obviously pressed into a mold. And the additional thing is it is that granular stuff. Now, they claim this is basalt, which is not from lavas. It's obviously not. And secondly, they claim it's carved. Obviously not. Thirdly, they claim it's giant. It's obviously not. That was a toy soldier's head for, for an Olmec kid. All right, everybody knows about limestone. It has all the sea creatures in there and the little um, clam shells and all that business. And that is the chemical construction of that is CaCO3 primarily. Now, you can see little black stuff in here and there. That is uh, ferrous oxides, more than likely, which are um, um, iron. Um, byproducts, oxides of iron that are from life. They're from the blood in life and, and that's what I'm saying. Marine limestone. Now let's go to porphyritic limestone. You see this? Now this is the other limestone that they have that they can't, I, they have no clue about it so they call it limestone and they say that it, it somehow bubbled up together and recrystallized way deep in the earth and it's not has nothing to do with that. This is the product of life. These are the crystals of life that are left over after the things in life that are organic that do the jobs of running around delivering blood and this and that and bile and all the fluids of life get sublimated out. You end up with minerals and metals and this is it. This is what's left. And of course carbon. Carbon is the last thing that ever goes bad. All right, I'm going to show you something. Now look at this carefully. This is a tendon, a flap of tendinous material. These are the straps, and they go through these little Chinese finger trap holes. Now this one here, you see the strap that goes down? You see that ball under there? That ball is supposed to insert into bone or, or, or fleshy material that holds it. Now, you see this mottly looking bubbly stuff over here? That is what's called a synovial sheath and the, um, uh, the fascia that surrounds these and allows them to slide back and forth on their own. And um, that's what a tendon looks like, and that is what an enthesis ball looks like. Where that inserts into the bone, it, it has like spikes in it. You can't really see it, but when you have them, I'll show you. Some have spikes, some don't. These kind don't. And the one I'm going to show you doesn't have the spikes. But I have some that do have the spikes. And I'll show you those too if you like. All right, you saw that ball that I showed you and before. Now, this is the same type of ball affair. Now, I cut, obviously cut the front off. But this is the strap. All right, that is the strap. And that would have attached to another ball, just like you saw in that, that, that picture I showed you in a minute. That would have been out here in another ball attached, and this ball would have inserted. Now, if you can see this, you see those little fibrils in there? 
those are the same fibrils that you saw in that uh, the uh, attendance material, the olivines. But this ball inserts and it, it comes back in a strap and then a strap inserts into muscles and, and, and so forth and that's what allows you to pull back and forth structurally in your body. And that's just the way it is. Now that, this is olivine and these are what they call uh, pancreas and they're little they're, they're all they're, they're um, limestone fibers that run all the way down and that's what gives you that structural integrity of your uh, tenderness material now here's another one that was in different conditions you saw that one you see this one cut you see all those holes in there this was in a condition I think it was in what uh, fluorite and it ate away at the minerals that were in those little fibers that were in there and uh, but you could see I mean it's, 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 there's no question this of what I'm saying this is it is and I have these the actual big fingers that these went to and these were actually from fingers and this laid this is what the tendon that does the articulation in your fingers there's three of them and they, they lay right into your fingers and that's what lets you move your fingers up and down and they strap, these are the strappy things that go all the way back up into, and that's the blood vessels there that, that, that service the blood. And uh, these are our tenderness materials. And this particular stuff is the same fibers that is the fascia that coats everything on the body. You see, there's blood vessels everywhere. Everything gets invested with blood. If you don't have blood, you got no uh, life. And that's part of the fibrous stalk, see? It? Okay, this is the kind that has all the spikes in it. There are little spikes all around. See this ball structure right here? And that is the strap that it's cut here. But it would have gone right up here. And that is the actual strap right there that runs back to this particular ball. And that ball insert in a bone. I think this was in a fire, some combusted somehow. It might be even like a, a meteorite. Because all the stuff coming through space is alive too. Comma 67P, 100% biological. I mean, it's all dead out there, but it, it, it was alive at one time. How it got there, uh, I have my ideas, but you'd have to make your own decision. But anyway, you see what this is, and this is a tendon assembly, and that's what these things are. They come out and they grab a hold, and that allows you to, to move different bones and so forth. By the way, all rocks have veins and arteries in them. See that? That's the vein, which is always black and dark because there's clamps in there and it won't let the blood escape. The arteries usually blow out or turn white or are reddish. Now, this is also that olivine. All right, this is a tendon assembly. Now, it came down here, and in between the tendon flaps, this flap came down and it extended out to here, and the ball is right underneath there. And between the two layers, they have a bloody layer of what's called slurpy, SLRP, small leucine-rich proteins. And, uh, and, and that is what allows them to slide. That was that bumpy, gooey stuff like I showed you at the top of that figure right there. And this is one of these tendon assemblies. It's just what it is.